Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now on my usual hunt for PC related bargains I stumbled across a rather questionable seller on a popular online second hand site. That's all I'm going to say because as of this video there is an ongoing not dispute but resolution occurring so I'll leave it at that for now. Anyway looking through this individual's feedback and it was clear that there was a problem with some of the motherboard bundles that they were selling. This was apparent by the negative reviews they had gained over the past couple of weeks. There were about five or six in total. Now the issue that was being mainly reported was the fact that these motherboard bundles were overheating. Now I stumbled upon this listing totally accidentally but I decided to investigate and today my FX 4300 motherboard bundle arrived. Now yes this is an old CPU and motherboard combination but it was cheap and I actually think for the price it was a pretty good deal. You're getting an FX 4300, a basic AM3 Plus motherboard and 8 gigs of DDR3 for £30. Now this wasn't too bad and some may assume going into this that it was a scam to begin with but people were receiving these orders it was just the fact that there was something going wrong each time which led some to believe that these were faulty products. So this is my bundle as you can see the fan is marked FX probably for the seller's reference here so they don't get too confused when shipping out multiple orders but I did happen to notice that the 8 gigs of RAM I was supposed to receive in two 4 gigabyte sticks actually came as a single 8 gigabyte stick. No big deal but apart from that, on the surface, everything looked good and clean. However, I decided that I was going to throw this in the system straight away and test to see if it worked. If I test something before disassembling it, I can be sure that it wasn't me who broke it. And considering I was ensured that thermal paste had been applied to this bundle before shipping, I thought we were at no risk of things going wrong. I actually thought that was the issue first of all, this seller was shipping out the bundles without thermal paste, hence the overheating, but I was assured it was there, so I stuck it in the system along with a GT1030 and fired it up. As you can see, I ran across various problems with black screens, a couple of restarts, and the PC eventually just ended up shutting down altogether, which no one wants to see, especially when you're firing up your system for the first time. This was a mild inconvenience, to say the least. So now it was time to take this bundle apart, knowing that it sort of worked and that everything was sort of as it should be, apart from the obvious. So the first thing to do was obviously remove the heatsink fan from the processor itself. Upon this I made a rather odd discovery. There was a thermal pad on top of the CPU which was about half a centimetre thick. Too thick in fact to reliably cool this processor. Now I can only assume other people who purchased a similar bundle were experiencing problems because of this thermal pad though no one had actually taken it apart to see what was underneath the heatsink. I however have and it's not too pretty. This stuff is rather odd. It's the sort of stuff that you may use to cool graphics card VRMs but it has no place on a processor. I know you can cool CPUs with graphite thermal pads if they're very thin. I have seen a few videos on the subject and they do an okay job. They're really not that much better than good thermal paste but they do okay if you don't want to keep wiping it off and replacing it if you are swapping your parts quite often. In this case though, well, this is not suitable material for the job and I can see where the negative reviews came from. Instead of calling this person out, I thought I would just say to them, look, you're getting negative reviews for this reason. If you just switch to thermal paste, you'll have an okay time. I don't understand why they're not using thermal paste in the first place because these pads can't be much cheaper than buying a job lot of thermal paste tubes from China or something like that you know even if it's just cheap stuff it will work a lot better than these pads so I'm gonna check back in two weeks or so and see if the seller has improved their ways and uh, yeah you know this was an odd one I didn't intend to make a video like this I wanted to put together a cheap gaming PC and I stumbled across these components then across the negative review reviews and thought 
let's do a little bit of an investigation. As you can see, after replacing the thermal pads with traditional thermal paste, we were experiencing no problems. I even jumped into a couple of games with the aforementioned GT1030, and the system held out fine, despite not performing all that well. But I guess that's all I can say. You know, I decided to investigate. These are my findings. It was a very simple fix, and I apologise if you are left disappointed, but I had to look into this. I wanted to record my findings because I want to check back, like I say, in a couple of weeks and see if the seller has switched to traditional thermal paste to avoid these overheating problems. But that was a very simple troubleshooting session, I'll, I'll admit. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. What are some of the silliest things you've seen if you've ever ordered pre-built parts? Leave your experiences down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I'll be back with some benchmark testing of another product. I'm not sure yet, CPU or GPU in the next one. So hopefully you can join me then.